Whether you are on an adventure or at the downtown cafe, your answers are no more than a sniff away. Dog Training 360's purpose is simple, to teach you why dogs do what they do, as well as the action steps you need to take to have better communication, connection, consistency, and conceivability with your dog. We're going to talk about a really touchy subject, and um, and it's, it's going to affect it's going to affect a lot of people and it's going to trigger some emotion in people and, um, in, in one way or another. And, and the topic is going to be doodles. Mm -hmm. And, um, we have more doodles in our client base than any other breed right now. Mm -hmm. And it cycles. I mean, when Obama's bought the Portuguese water dogs, we had a ton of Portuguese water dogs. Um, but people have really mixed emotions about to breed or not to breed these crosses. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about from the border doodles. I'm talking about from the sheep doodles, the burna doodles, Mm -hmm. the golden doodles, the lab doodles, the doodles you can think of anything crossed with a poodle. (laughs) Um, the, the frustrating thing, um, for me is this, if, if we're creating a breed, for a purpose mm-hmm. of what that dog is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. What their job is. Um, I'm all about it. Mm-hmm. I'm all about it. But we're breeding doodles for the sake of a hair and for the sake of a look. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily the sake of a consistent personality. Mm-hmm. Um, every doodle that we come across is different. Mm-hmm. There's some consistencies to it because... There's consistencies to the poodle and there's consistency to the other breed. Mm -hmm. But the breed in general is not consistent. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can say that I've, I have worked with two that are crossed over correctly, Mm -hmm. if you will, that's got several other breeds in it from Mm -hmm. a generation standpoint, Mm -hmm. um, that those dogs were actually very brilliant and fun to work in. Mm-hmm. definitely workable mm-hmm. um and we're very consistent to each other mm-hmm. of what they were what they were bred um but not really sure what their purpose was mm-hmm. um and so it's a touchy subject because people love them mm-hmm. or people get so angry because of all the doodle crosses mm-hmm. and we're paying thousands of dollars for mutts mm-hmm. So why not go to the shelter? Mm -hmm. Why not just go get a mutt somewhere? Mm -hmm. Um, And eventually, I think in time, the shelter will decrease their pit bull population and increase their doodle population. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it is so, it's so big Mm -hmm. right now. Um, And they're, so I get frustrated Mm -hmm. when, um, when, when I'm dealing with doodles in the fact that they're doodles, not that I'm dealing with and training and helping owners be successful with their dogs. Mm -hmm. Because to me, I look at dogs as dogs. It's Mm -hmm. not like, but, but it's really, um, I'm not seeing great things happening with the breeds. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not seeing progression Mm -hmm. with the breeds, if Mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. And that's from a trainer standpoint, you know, do I like doodles? If I could see progression and I could see people really trying to focus and build out a breed for a purpose, Mm -hmm. um, but over the last uh, five years, five to eight years, I'm I'm not seeing progression. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing consistently doodles. Well, and because we see, he sees uh, some dogs that that are like nice normal dogs that people call us like immediately as they're thinking about getting a dog yeah and yeah. we help them pick out the dog yeah put it yep. in in the right house and train him to be successful from right. the beginning because we put all this thought into like what kind of dog yeah like they're some of those yeah. right yep yeah and then there's a lot of a number of people that get a, a purebred dog uh, and have expectations of what that dog is supposed to be and mm-hmm. how they're going to behave. Right. And they're able to train it themselves. And yeah. they never call us. Yeah. Because there's clear uh, kind of rules yeah. 
to how that dog behaves. Right. To if, right. If you say I'm going to get a beagle. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like what you're getting into. Right. 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 And so then those dogs that uh, that are purebred dogs that are not able to be trained mm-hmm. because they deviate from the expectation. Right. Is where we come. Yep. So we yep. train a lot of dogs that deviate from an expectation. Yeah. Yeah. Of what they imagine it'll be going in. Right. 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 With doodles. It, we just train all the doodles no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. We see so many more doodles mm-hmm. than any other breed yep. or mixed breed yep. dog. Yep. Because there is no rhyme or reason to how they function. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Right. We just train all the doodles. Yeah. They all need to be trained. Yep. And nobody, well, maybe some people out there have like a really good doodle yeah. that fit some expectation that they were able to train themselves yeah. more you know? of that the personality fit into the home well and so it just jived. was easy yeah w- easy for them yeah. to do yeah but and that's really not the case with all of like 90 percent mm-hmm. of other dogs mm-hmm. out in the world right because there's plenty of people that train their dog and don't ever yeah. ever need to call us right right some people like we love to help train dogs that are like nice dogs right. that learn yeah. easy yeah. and they're really easy to train and yeah. we can teach them all this cool stuff and they turn into this amazing yeah. dog yeah. we love that yeah we also love to take dogs that are <laughs> horrible right nasty and and shift. they're not doing good and turn them in yeah. to that yeah you know but it's it's just it's really really disproportionate yeah, yeah. uh the amount of doodles that we're training because they're all like horrible right sorry doodle lovers it's of the world but there's just there's no consistency to it that's there. why yeah mm-hmm. because because you if you're picking out a dog you have an expectation for what you want and yeah. you can find a dog that fits right into what right what you want to do yeah like if you're a couch potato human being that lives in an apartment you like don't want to get a visla <laughs> right right <laughs> yeah like yeah and you know that yes going in yeah and so right. most people don't get one right they get a, a couch potato kind of dog. Yeah. A miniature poodle. Right. Uh, right. I don't even know. You know, yeah. a dog that fits that lifestyle. Yeah. Because you can assign an expectation and the breeders are breeding to an expectation. Yeah. Yeah. And the expectations meet. Right. 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 And, the, and it's just like totally opposite. Yeah. It, it, what, you know, I think what the struggle is really, Shannon, you know, with you saying that is the doodles are going off of a look and a coat. And sometimes they don't even have the coat. Right, like they're breeding right, them to look. get a coat, yeah. and then and then they don't even they yeah. don't even have yeah. it. Yep. So so on that note, um, the average price for a doodle, uh, you know, they go anywhere from eight hundred to six thousand. Sure. I mean, it's a big range. Yeah, it's absolutely. a big range. Um, and so you know, it's whatever. It's whatever your budget and whatever you're doing is totally fine, and it's not that worry are so anti doodles that we don't want to train them. We train them all the time and, and we help people be successful with Mm -hmm. them. The struggle that I have and, and the struggle that everybody should have with it is there's just not breeding with purpose Mm -hmm. to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to many, 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 many doodle breeders Mm -hmm. and not one of them have been able to answer that question for me. Mm -hmm. Convince me. Well, and I like mean, that's what I want is somebody to convince me that this is like right. when we say like to a purpose, like uh, there are dogs that are bred to be companion dogs. Yes. Right. Yeah. A Shih Tzu uh-huh. is a companion dog. Yep. It's bred with a personality to want to be with you. Right. And to sit on your lap. Yep. All yep. day long. Yeah. And the Havanese were bred to herd chickens. Sure. Back in the day. You know, you know, so you're going to get that type of feel to them. Right. Yeah. So, so most all like registered breeds yeah. over generations and yeah. years and years and years and years have been bred to do a job. Right. And being a companion is fine. Yes. Right. You know, we're not saying. Right. Like, but we can't even get that consistent in the doodles. No, no. Like if people were saying, oh, doodles are such great companions and they're such great family dogs. Yeah. And we're specifically breeding them for because this dog has this personality and this dog has this yeah. personality and we're going for like this family yeah, dog the that temperament and yeah, disposition it's, it's is like a, you know consistently a big 
couch potato yeah. dog but like really likes the busyness of being in a family yeah and we specifically breed these to get yeah that yeah and there's a handful of breeders that'll say you know these dogs make great emotional support dogs or service dogs and but they've only bred one or two litters yeah i mean it, the breeders breed generation after generation after generation and their lines to get consistent go behavior to mm-hmm. like the, what they're breeding for dogs are go back to like royalty in yeah. england yeah had these dogs yeah you know yep. before people even right. came to america right. to live yep you know they yep. can trace they have records they're really serious yeah about yeah. where the lines of the dogs came from right that was a big deal yeah yeah even then right you know yep so, you know, even looking at different, like, I've, I had one border collie that just didn't fit in the city. Like, he just couldn't, he needed to be working on a ranch all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, to now my two girls, you know, Patsy is very much so, can live in the city and life is good and we mm-hmm. go out and work. And Amelia is kind of in between those two right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, there's, you know, obviously different personalities and different lines of breeding and and purposeful you know breeding um i just i just want things to shift i don't care if doodles are continuing to be bred Mm -hmm. i just want to get it out there that there needs to be a purpose to the breeding Mm -hmm. to get consistent behavior Mm -hmm. to get a consistent breed Mm -hmm. that we can truly say that it's a doodle but we're breeding we're not even we can't even stay consistent within the crossbreeds of you know, there's just another doodle that pops up. Right. Oh, now we have a pointer poodle and we have a, you know, I mean, it, it, there's so, there's so much that they're crossing with that there's just no, they're, you know, I'd, they can't answer why they're getting what they're getting and why they're doing what they're doing. Um, so it's very much so a look. Well, it's very me, much so a I think hair. Like Hair is a se- way secondary thing. Mm-hmm. Like if you but look it's at not for some most of people. these old, older breeds, like yeah. we have smooth and rough coat. Yeah, yeah. And that was like an accident. Yeah, yeah. You know, yep. like they were breeding for a specific purpose for like fox terriers or, yeah. it, or killing rodents, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they're breeding them, breeding them, breeding them because of these rodent hunting uh-huh. qualities. Uh-huh. And then somehow rodent hunting qualities is linked to curly or, or yeah. short hair yeah right yeah and then ones might be really good i don't know super about fox terriers but ones might be certain good at one kind of rats yeah. and one might be good at getting yep. snakes yeah and then for whatever and reason then it, uh, snake uh territory are curly yep. oh yeah yeah because where they it, live the, yep they but need a little bit more coat in different territories but they weren't like we have these dogs that hit get rats and we want them to have curly hair right how can we get our rat hunting dogs to have curly hair right like it's an opposite yeah from all other breeding yeah to go and look at hair and because when you're breeding you do breed for specific look i mean for that's sure part of it yeah but these qualities of the hair and the color and all of that it's, it's an evolution is really of really secondary mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. the mental acuity yeah and propensity yeah of what you want the dog to do right right and yep. so that's probably really why we yep. don't like it because it's like completely backwards yes completely completely backwards yeah. yep from every other breed right uh yeah and like i'm all about let's create something new but let's do it with purpose yeah um and so on that note i have a litter of labradoodles yep um and they're priced, they're priced in the mid-range of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but what people don't, what people don't know, and, and I, you know, to be honest, I'm struggling getting them sold because, um, one, they're older. Um, and two, they, you know, they don't have the curly coat mm-hmm. like the poodle. They've got a scruffy coat. So mm-hmm. if they ended up in the shelter, the shelter would probably call them a wire hair retriever mix yeah 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 um but they're not they're labs and doodle or poodle crosses um and the other piece that people are uh, you know kind of get hung up on i think is you know they're the price is priced for the training and the stuff that i'm putting into these dogs to help them have a great home because they're not it was just an un it was just a bad uh, a situation that went bad and, you know, I'm, I'm took them on with the intent of 
trying to help these dogs get into a good home. Mm -hmm. Um, And they're dogs to me. They're not like, oh, look, we've got these poodle doodle cross things that, you know, you should be spending a lot of money on where I'm saying you what you're going to get and the value of these dogs as dogs Mm -hmm. is far more than what you would ever get picking it up from a breeder. Mm -hmm. Um, Because we already put all this time into helping them be successful. Yeah. Like a breeder puts in some time, like a a responsible breeder puts in things to help them be successful. But they, most puppies leave the breeder at eight weeks old. And they're not crate trained. No. And they're not headed into life routines. No. Um, They're not socialized with a bunch of other dogs. Nope. Um, They're not um, socialized in different environments. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, they're, they're, it's just, there's so much that we're putting into them. Um, handling them and desensitizing them and, you know, hooking leashes up and letting them drag a leash around Mm -hmm. and, you know, pulling them aside and working on their obedience stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I, it's hard for me as a trainer to sell, um, dogs like this because it's not, it's not part of my repertoire, um, at all. Right. Like I almost feel guilty, um, that I'm, even trying to sell them mm-hmm. um but i'm putting a lot of work into them to get it be successful into a home and hopefully the people that buy them don't have to go through extensive training and have behavioral problems because we're laying a foundation with them well yeah you're not just training them like five minutes a day no you're training them literally 24 yeah. hours a day yeah i mean it's it's a lot of of work with seven of them and and so, you know, it's a weird thing because people go, I can't even believe you have these doodles because, I mean, they're not, it's not like it's your thing. And I'm like, it's not my thing. And I'm not taking them on because they're doodles. And I'm not taking them on because, oh, there's a chance that I can make a ton of money off of, of a doodle cross. No. Because no matter what this, what the breed was, um, these dogs with the help. circumstances yeah. that they were in, they needed they needed to get out of it, out of there, and they needed to get moving on in life and, mm-hmm. and set up to be successful to go into homes. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's why I took them on. And so, um, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a weird place to be, um, because there is really no purpose behind the breeding. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're treating them like good solid dogs and that's our expectations mm-hmm. that these boys have to live up to. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think that as as people out there are looking at doodles, um, w- I'm I'm not anti I'm not anti doodle, I'm anti poor breeding mm-hmm. um, practices of trying to yeah across the board. Mm-hmm. You know yeah, and so it's just that doodles are on such the forefront of everything, mm-hmm. um, and and when I ask people day in and day out, you know why a doodle? Well, because they don't shed. Maybe. But maybe. <laughs> yeah. And, and, but there's a lot of other breeds that don't shed too. Mm-hmm. Um, that have generations and generations of, of, consistent of training. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, tra- not training, but <laughs> of breeding. Breeding of yeah, the. Yeah, to have a certain coat type. Yeah. And to know that that's what you're going to get. Right. Um, and so, you know, it's, it really is a, a, a funny hair thing with these doodles. And the personalities and the and the purpose behind what they're, you know, I see more conflict in the dogs mm-hmm. than I see, um, you know, consistency. There's in these seven boys that I have there, you can see the poodle traits mm-hmm. and you can see the lab traits. And sometimes you can see the conflict that happens with the crossing of these mm-hmm. breeds. They in because them. they instinctually have a job. Yeah. If they've been bred correctly yeah. over generations and generations. Yep. And this is a thing with all mixed designer mixed breeds. Yeah. Because some mixes are bad idea. Yeah. Really bad yeah. idea. Because the uh, personalities of the job yeah. are so disparate. Right. That when you bring them together, the dog is in conflict yes. with itself yeah. all the time about yeah. what it should choose to do. Right. Because it has two instincts. Yep. Where yep. a, a dog that's purebred over generations and generations for one purpose right. has the instincts to follow one pathway. Yep. Yep. And they're not in conflict with themselves. Right. Right. And that's why we have so many behavior problems mm-hmm. because they instinctually don't know what they're supposed to be doing. Right. 
they really don't right. know what yeah. what should we do yeah should we do this should we do that yeah well, they, yes no yes no <laughs> like, yeah they can't and, decide and i think even just getting into um you know the it, the poodle crosses are not the only thing that's out there that's you know when you say that it, you know there's the pomeranian the husky that's a with the ponskies pomskies horrible mix um again for talk looks. about conflict yeah yeah it's that's a totally yeah. looks thing yeah because they want their teeny dogs to be more fluffy yeah and look more wolfish yeah uh, and um. it's just so i can't think of any two more conflicting breeds yeah conflicting yeah. purposes yeah a dog m- that's made to sit on your lap and be cute and follow you around mm-hmm. and a dog that's made to be like a rough and tumbly wild out in the <laughs> wilderness yeah. Out in the action, yeah. surviving to live, yeah, and then the, you put those together, and you have all these big, huge, wild, foresty instincts in a teeny little thing that doesn't know what to do with itself. Right, right, yeah, and they can't just can't function. I no. mean, it, and and I know people have all these breeds, and I know all these people have successful stories with all these breeds, but. I just want to encourage people to think about why am I getting what I'm getting? Mm-hmm. And if it's a look, if it's a hair. Maybe you can find that look in something else. That I'm certain you can find that look in something else. But also, it's not right. It's not right. A miniature toy poodle will never, ever, ever breed with an old English sheepdog female. Mm-hmm. Ever, ever. Mm-hmm. There's nothing in nature that puts that dog up on a stool mm-hmm. to be and have the ability to do that. Mm-hmm. And and I just want to drive home that it, it doesn't matter what the mud is. It doesn't matter. But if, if there's no purpose other than a look, then you should think about it. If there's no purpose in what's happening... And your drive is because you don't want a dog that sheds. There's hundreds of dogs that don't shed. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you're allergic, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be allergic to a doodle. That's true. Um, And so I I just want to, you know, for me, I think it's just so, uh, from a trainer standpoint, one, um, that I I feel... Um, conflicted about this litter of puppies Mm -hmm. um, in the sense that, you know, people know they're like so off for you, but it's not off for me in the sense that I'm taking these dogs and I'm training them to be successful. And and the price that you're paying for is the training um, that you're getting behind these dogs, not because they're poodle lab crosses. Um, And it's intense training. Yeah. It's all day, all night. Yeah. Every day. Yep. Um, and so, you know, I, there's a lot of great crosses out there and there's a lot of great doodles in a lot of great homes. Um, but I, I think that this craze has gotten to be, um, in a very unhealthy place, um, that people need to really think about, you know, what, what is the purpose behind it and why, why are we going after it? Mm -hmm. Um, and if you want help finding the right breed and maybe we say you know what here's here is a doodle cross that would be perfect for you of Mm -hmm. what you're looking for and here's the right person that's doing it correctly um you know that we're here to help but it really is important to think about the purpose behind you know what you're going to get in these dogs and and research Mm -hmm. i mean research what a border collie is Mm -hmm. and research what a poodle is and see what conflict there is and really like analyze it Mm -hmm. and make sure because it's not a fun cross Mm -hmm. at all Mm -mm. um so again it think about it um and and really understand that there's so much importance in in correct breeding and um having a breeding program that is true to what nature would would put us at Mm -hmm. um and i'm gonna leave this note on a on a nutritional uh statement um with this if if pandas can't eat their diet they'll die Mm -hmm. they're not going to change their diet Mm -mm. if 
a mountain lion cannot eat meat, Mm -hmm. it will die. Mm -hmm. They're not going to change their diet Mm -hmm. to survive. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you maybe in maybe in time, but ultimately they die. Mm -hmm. A dog, if they can't cross in nature, it's probably not a thing. Mm And probably should not be a thing. Mm -hmm. And so you need to just look at the big picture on, you know, what is really going on in these these dogs' heads. Mm -hmm. Um, And and how has the people set these dogs up to be successful um, in the world that we live in right now? Mm -hmm. 